The second trigonometric law is a cosine law. We also use the cosine law when we don't have a right angle triangle. Remember then when we do have a right angle triangle, that's when we use SOHCAHTOA. So we use the two laws when we don't have right angle triangles. Now you're probably wondering, well, when do I know to use sine law and when do I know to use cosine law? You're going to use sine law when you have partners, but when you have no way to get those partners, then that's when you use the cosine law. Okay, so we have three cosine laws at the bottom. You don't have to memorize all three. They're actually all very similar. If I'm looking for A, then I start with A. Okay, for the second one, if I was looking for B, that's when I would start with B squared. Okay, so it just, it changes up depending on what letter you're looking for. Now, let's ignore the other two for now. Okay, and just focus on the one at the top. Whatever is at the front is also at the back. So right now I'm just giving you tips on how to remember this formula. Okay, whatever is in the middle, this, these two, are the other letters that is not that A. So the other two letters. And those are also the ones that fall here. Okay. So you'll notice that if I get rid of this one and I'm looking for B, B will also be at the back and the two other letters A, C, will be the ones in the middle. All right. One more time. All three of the formulas are exactly the same. It just switches up depending on which letter you're looking for. Okay, so here's an example. In triangle ABC, angle A equals 61 degrees, little b is 11.5 meters, and little c is 13.2 meters. Find little a to the nearest tenth. That's one decimal place. I decided to draw a diagram, okay, and I filled in all of my information, and you'll see that I labeled little a because that's what I'm looking for. Notice that there aren't any partners, so here I'm missing my a. This guy's partner, I'm missing my angle, and this guy's partner also missing those angles. Okay, so there's no way that I could actually set up sine law, and that's when I know that I want to put in cosine law. So here's cosine law. Again, I started with a squared because I'm looking for little a. Okay, and I'm going to start filling it in now. So here's little b, that's 11.5, and we also have little c, which is 13.2. Okay, so like I said, here's little b, little c. Both of those are squared, and then I'm going to go minus 2 times b times c. Okay. And I did have that angle for capital A, and that was 61. All right, now that I have all my numbers, I'm just going to solve for little a now. So I'm going to simplify it by figuring out what those squares are. All right, so 11.5 squared gives me this, 13.2 squared gives me this, and oh, where did that 300 come from? Well, that's all three of these multiplied together because the cos 61 has to stay together by itself. Okay, so that's where I got this 303.6 from. The next thing that I would do is I would actually put the two reds in the front first, the ones that are adding each other. People make this common mistake. They actually add and subtract all three of these together. Now, you can't actually do that because this guy is together. They're multiplying each other. So you can't really separate that 300.6 and put it with the rest of them. Remember, bed mass. You want to do multiplication before you do the subtraction. So you can't do the 174 subtract 303 first. All right, so let me just tell you where I got these. I'm going to add these two together and they make this number right here. Again, notice that that rest, all of this, stayed exactly the same because those guys belong together, okay? Now what we're going to do is find the answer to the 303.6 times co61, and we're going to take that and we're going to subtract it from the 306.49. So this is what I get. And lastly, oh, wait, 
we probably approximated here because I did the coast. So I want to make sure that I have my approximation dot. All right, that's a rounded number. And our last step is we're just going to get rid of that squared by square rooting both sides. Okay, there we go. And again, these are approximation dots. They're probably going to disappear when I change the slide, but that's okay. You understand where I was rounding. Okay, so therefore, A is 12.6 meters. All right. What you could actually do is you could actually skip some steps. So right now I'm going to show you which steps that you probably don't have to write. Um, I would definitely write this step on a test or a quiz. You don't have to show me probably this one or this one, but you could punch this entire thing into your calculator and you would get this answer right away. So I would definitely show this step and also your answer. This is basically a three-step problem, and it's really easy when you're looking for one side, so your side length. It gets a little bit more tricky when you're looking for an angle. Okay, so here's a side note. I want to show you how to find an angle. We just found our answer as 12.6 as our A. Okay, what I want to show you is I want to go backwards, and I actually want to find our capital A. Now remember, in our last example, it was 61 degrees. Okay, so we are getting the 61 degrees, and I just want to show you how I did that. There is a formula that allows you to solve for an angle. The only problem is you're going to have to memorize that formula, and that formula looks like this. Cos A equals to A squared minus B squared minus C squared all over negative 2BC, okay? So you could technically just use this formula to find the angle, but then that's just another formula that you're going to have to memorize. So I'm going to show you the steps of how to solve for it, and you're going to get the exact same thing. The only thing is, with my method, you don't have to solve, and, or sorry, memorize another formula. Okay, so let's get rid of all this. Here's the original formula. I'm not going to change it. I've subbed in everything that I know into these parts right here. Okay, and again, this was our answer from last time. We're going to go backwards now and see if we can get that 61 degrees for our A. Okay, so our A is unknown. It's right over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting things together. So I've evaluated each of these. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add these two together, get the 306.49, and again, you want to make sure that that 303.6 cos A, it stays together. Don't subtract those two 300s. You're going to bring this to the other side, and it's going to become a minus. Okay, once you subtract, you get this number right here. Very quickly, notice that this is a minus. This minus is still there. A lot of people forget that minus as well. Then all you're going to do is you're going to divide both sides by negative 303.6 so that those guys go away, and you're going to do the same to the other side, and that's where this comes from. All right. Once we divide, we get this, and that is an approximation. I used four decimal places because I want to be accurate. I don't want to put it as 0 0.5. That's going to chop off a lot of numbers once we get down to the degree sign. So remember, you're pressing second function cos, so the inverse of cos, and then 0 0.4867 on your calculator. You're going to get 61 degrees. All right? I'm basically using the same formula. I'm just solving for, in this case, my unknown, which is A. There's no memorization of a new formula. Okay. All right, let's get into the hockey now. There's a breakaway. So here's the overall word problem. I'm just going to draw a diagram to kind of help me out. The defense is 12 meters from the offense. So here is the offense right here. And we got the defenseman 
and we have the goalie. Okay, and 14 meters from the goalie. So the defenseman is 14 meters from the goalie as well. If the offense is 14.3 meters from the goalie, what angle must they shoot at to score? And we want that to the nearest degree. So you can see that we have our unknown right here. Okay, notice that again, we can't set up sign law. I have my missing side. I don't know what that is. Sorry, missing angle. This guy's partner is not there either, and this guy's partner is also missing. So we can't set up sign law. What we're going to do is we're going to set up cosine law. Since we're looking for our question mark, which is at big O, I'm going to set up the formula starting with O. Okay, and again, notice that we've actually changed all the other letters to those uh, the G's and the G's. Okay, so everything follows the letters that were given in the question. I'm going to put in all my numbers. So here is little o, because it's big, opposite of big O. Then we have little d, which is right here. Okay, and little g, which is right there, because it's opposite of big G. And we're going to fill in all the numbers. We're looking for capital O. It's all the way in the corner. So we're going to solve for that. And again, I'm not going to give you another formula to do it. We're just going to use the same formula. Let's figure out what all those squares equal to. Okay, so here's this guy right there. We got this guy right here. And then this one's right there. We're going to multiply the 2 times the 14.3 times the 12. We're going to get this. And that is multiplying this cos 0. Sorry, cos O. Okay. So again, you don't want to put together the 200, the 144, and the 300 together. You're not allowed to do that. The 300 is attached to that cos O. So let's bring over the 204 and the 144 to the other side. I might have combined them first. Yes, I did. Okay, so I combined them first to make this. And then I'm going to bring this over to the other side, and it's going to become a negative. Okay, so there it is right there. Be careful with the negatives. That's still a negative, 343.2. Okay. All right, so subtraction, and then we're going to divide both sides by negative 343.2 to get rid of this over negative 343.2. We should get a decimal number. There we go. And again, I rounded this decimal number because there are a lot of decimal places throughout your entire screen for your calculator, but we want to make sure that there's at least four decimal places in there. It makes it nice and um, nice and accurate. Then to get the cos to the other side, we're going to do that inverse cos. And there you go. We have O by itself, 64 degrees. Since this is a word problem, we're going to put a therefore statement. And of course, my rounding dots are going to disappear. <laughs> okay, so the person must shoot at an angle of 64 degrees in order to score. Okay, so there's the cosine law, how to find a side, and also how to find an angle. If you want to memorize the formula to find an angle just to make it a little bit easier on you, then that's definitely something you can do as well.